Good day, acute angels. Welcome to a new learning episode. This is Teacher Eliza, your grade 8 mathematics teacher. Before we start, kindly prepare the following. Your Math 8 self-learning module, your pen and paper for note-taking or for writing your answers as we go through this discussion. And most importantly, find a place in your home where you feel most comfortable to study and learn. In this week 3 lesson, you will learn how to prove inequalities in a triangle. In writing proofs, you have to determine the appropriate statements and give reasons for this. Be reminded that theorems may be proven in different ways. The proofs that we will use in this lesson are some examples of how these theorems are to be proven. Let us start with Proving Triangle Inequality Theorem 1. As you can recall, this theorem states that if one side of a triangle is longer than the second side, then the angle opposite the first side is larger than the angle opposite the second side. Let us have an example. Given that triangle LMN where inside LN is greater than side LM, let us prove that the measure of angle LMN is greater than the measure of angle LNM. Now we need to make additional constructions to prove this statement. With the compass point on vertex L and with radius LM, mark a point P on LN and connect points M and P with a segment to form a triangle. Then, name angles 1 and 2 of triangles LMP and angle 3 of triangle LMN. We can now prove this using the two-column proof. For our first statement, how do you describe the relationship between LM and LP? LM is congruent to LP based on the additional construction we have made on the figure. Next, using statement number 1, triangle LMP is isosceles since sides LM and LP, which are congruent, are its legs, and that defines an isosceles triangle. Number 3, again, based on statement number 1, since LM is congruent to LP, we can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 since the base angles of isosceles triangle are also congruent. Number 4, if we study the illustration, we can say that angle LMN is congruent to angle 1 plus angle 2. It is by angle addition postulate. Next, statement. Based on statement number 4, angle LMN is greater than angle 1 because of the property of inequality. And number 6, using statements 3 and 5, since angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and angle LMN is greater than angle 1, thus angle LMN is also congruent to angle 2. And it is by substitution property. For number 7, study the illustration and write an operation statement involving angle MPN and angle 2. As you can see, angle MPN and angle 2 form a linear pair and the angles of a linear pair add up to 180 degrees. So, angle 2 plus angle MPN is equal to 180 degrees. And it's because of the linear pair postulate. For statement number 8, study the illustration and write an operation statement involving angle MPN, angle N, and angle 3. These three angles are the three interior angles of the triangle MPN. So, angle MPN plus angle N plus angle 3 is equal to 180 degrees. It is because the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Now for our next statement, based on statements 7 and 8, 
Replace the right side of the equation of statement 7 with its equivalent in statement 8. Thus, angle 2 plus angle MPN is equal to angle MPN plus angle N plus angle 3. This is another example of substitution or transitive property. Next statement, what will be the result if the measure of angle MPN is subtracted from both sides of statement 9? It will be angle 2 is equal to angle N plus angle 3. And this is what we call subtraction property. Next statement, based on the previous statement, angle 2 is greater than angle N because of the property of inequality. And lastly, based on statements 6 and 11, if the measure of angle LMN is greater than the measure of angle 2 and measure of angle 2 is greater than the measure of angle N, then the measure of angle LMN is greater than the measure of angle N because of the transitive property. We have just proven the triangle inequality theorem 1. Now, it's time to have the triangle inequality theorem 3. This theorem states that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side. Let us have an example. Given that triangle LMN, where LM is less than LN and LN is less than MN, prove that MN plus LN is greater than LM, MN plus LM is greater than LN, and LM plus LN is greater than MN. Notice that MN is greater than LN, and MN is greater than LM. Then, it's obvious that the first two inequalities are true. Hence, what remains to be proven is the third statement. LM plus LN is greater than MN. For this example, we also need to add additional constructions. Let us construct segment LP as an extension of segment LM such that L is between M and P. LP is congruent to LN and triangle L and P is formed with angles 1 and 2. And angle 3 is for triangle P and M. Now, let us have the two-column proof of this one. For our first statement, LP is congruent to LN because of additional construction we have made on the illustration. Number two, based on the illustration, triangle L and P has two base angles 1 and 2 which are congruent. So, triangle L and P is isosceles because it has two base angles that are congruent that defines an isosceles triangle. For number 3, angle LNP is congruent to angle LPN because the base angles of isosceles triangle are congruent. Next statement, the illustration shows that angle LPN is congruent to angle MPN because basically, these two are just the same by sharing the same vertex. And the reason for this is their flexive property. Number 5. Using statements 3 and 4, we can say that angle L and P is congruent to angle MPN by transitive property. For statement number 6, from the illustration, angle M and P consists of the two angles L and M and L and P. Now, if we add these two angles, they are equal or congruent to angle M and P. It is because of the angle addition postulate. For number 7, using statements 5 and 6, by substituting angle L and P with its congruent angle, angle MPN on statement number 5, therefore, angle M and P is congruent to angle L and M plus angle MPN by substitution property. Next statement, using statement 7, angle M and P is greater than angle MPN by property of inequality. And for statement number 9,
From statement number 8, MP is greater than MN because according to Triangle Inequality Theorem 2, if one angle of a triangle is larger than the second angle, then the side opposite the first angle is longer than the side opposite the second angle. For number 10, based from the illustration, MP consists of the segments LM and LP. Hence, the sum of these two is equal to MP. It's because of the segment addition postulate. For number 11, using statements 9 and 10, substitute MP by MN, so LM plus LP is greater than MN by substitution property. And finally, using statements 1 and 11, substitute LP by LN, so that LM plus LN is greater than MN by substitution property. And we have already proven the Triangle Inequality Theorem 3. Now let us move on with the Exterior Angle Inequality Theorem, which states that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. Let us have an example. Given that triangle LMN with exterior angle LNP, prove that the measure of angle LNP is greater than the measure of angle MLN. Let us prove this inequality by constructing the following. First, midpoint Q on LN such that segment LQ is congruent to segment NQ. Next, segment MR through point Q such that segment MQ is congruent to segment QR. And then, draw a line from point R to N to form a segment and label angles 1, 2, and 4. Are you now ready to prove this using the two-column proof? Let us start. For our first statement, by construction, LQ is congruent to NQ and MQ is congruent to QR. Number 2, based from the illustration, angle 3 and angle 4 are pairs of opposite angles formed as lines LN and MR intersect. These are what we call vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. Number 3, based on statements 1 and 2, we can see the relationship between triangles LQM and NQR that they are congruent by SAS congruence postulate. And for statement number 4, Based on statement number 3, angle MLN is congruent to angle 1 because the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or the CPCTC. For number 5, based on the illustration, angle LNP consists of the two adjacent angles, angle 1 and angle 2. So, the measure of angle LNP is the sum of these two angles. Number 6, using statement number 5, angle L and P is greater than angle 1 by property of inequality. More so for statement number 7, using statements 4 and 6, since angle 1 is congruent to angle MLN, so substitute angle 1 by angle MLN to form the inequality angle L and P is greater than angle MLN. And the reason for this is the substitution property of equality. And we are now done with the exterior angle inequality theorem. And finally, we are down to our last theorem, which is the hinge theorem. This states that if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, but the included angle of the first triangle is greater than the included angle of the second, then the third side of the first triangle is longer than the third side of the second. Let us have an example. Given that triangle CAN and triangle LYT, where inside CA is congruent to side LY, and side AN is congruent to side YT, and measure of angle A is greater than the measure of angle Y, prove that side CN is greater than side LP. 
to prove this one, we need to have these two additional constructions which are segment AW such that AW is congruent to AN and YT. Segment AW is between side AC and side AN. And angle CAW is congruent to angle LYT. Now draw a line from point N to W, from point C to W, and from point H to W to form segments. Next, construct the bisector AH of angle NAW such that H is on side CN and angle NAH is congruent to angle WAH. Consequently, triangle NAH is congruent to triangle WAH by the SAS triangle congruence postulate because side AH is congruent to side AH by reflexive property of equality and AW is congruent to AN from construction number 1. So, WAH is also congruent to HN because the corresponding parts of the congruent of congruent triangles are congruent. Now, let us have the two-column proof of this one. For our first statement, from the illustration, CH and HN forms the segment CN. So, CN is equal to CH plus HN by the segment addition postulate. Number 2, using statement 1 and the statement WH is greater than HN, CN is equal to CH plus WH by substitution property of equality. Next statement, in triangle CHW, CH plus WH is greater than CW by the triangle inequality theorem 3. For our fourth statement, using statements 2 and 3, CN is greater than CW because of the substitution property of equality. Moreover, for statement number 5, from the statement in construction number 1, which is angle CAW is congruent to angle LYT, we can conclude that side CW is also congruent to side LT. Thus, by using this statement and statement number 4, we can have the inequality CN is greater than LT by substitution property of equality. And we are done with the proof of the Hinge theorem. That ends this lesson. Great job, grade 8 learners! I guess you are now ready to practice and apply what you have learned from this lesson by answering the activity provided. Number 1. Write the statement supported by the reasons on the right side of the two-column proof. Given that HN is congruent to EP, measure of angle OHP is greater than the measure of angle EPH, prove that OP is greater than EH. Number 2. Complete the missing statements from the two-column proof below. Given that angle VAE is congruent to angle VEA, AF is greater than EF, prove that the measure of angle AVF is greater than the measure of angle VF. And that's all for today. Thank you for your time and effort. I hope you have learned a lot from this lesson. Again, this is teacher Eliza May Kunanan, your grade 8 mathematics teacher. Thank you and God bless.